We're now going to go on to intarsia technique. And before we start the knitting, I want to go back to the sampler and show you the difference between stranding, which is what you've been doing, and intarsia. When you look at a piece of knitting to analyze what you're going to do to it, whether or not you're going to strand it or break it up into small pieces, you look across the row. And if you can see a color repeated, see this blue, pink, blue, this is only two colors per row. If it is repeated all the way across, then you strand it across. If, on the other hand, you come up and there's a long section, here's one section of black, a long section of nothing but blue, black, go into the gold, and all the way across where we pick up black again. There are about five color changes there, but they aren't stranded. Let's look at the back, which you've already seen once, but I want to reinforce this. You can see a lot of little yarn ends worked in here, but that's because each of these color, intarsia has another name. It's also called picture knitting. Each of these blocks is worked with a separate piece of yarn. And there's a very nice serviceable way to do this on the bond, but when I was making this sampler, especially when I got to the top where there is 13 color changes, actually I ran out of patience before I got there. When you get into multiple color changes, this simple technique becomes very difficult. So first I will show you the simple technique that you can use at any time if you're just going to make one or two or three color changes per row. This tiger sweater behind me is an example of that. It's worked only in two colors and there are no more than three color changes per row. A lot of it was done with duplicate stitch in the face later so I didn't have to have all those tiny little string ends. And I did this sweater in the technique that I'm going to show you right now. I've snipped everything off so that I have a nice clean piece of knitting and I'm going to start all over again. You hang a clip. In this technique, you decide where you're going to put your color change. For our purposes today, we're going to just use zero, where we're going to affect our change. We'll make this half turquoise and this half purple. Also, if I'm doing a long expanse, I once made a beautiful blanket, and I made the um, leftover wool yarns, and I just made them in large blocks and changed them every once in a while. I put little stickers, little white stickers at the end of these um, pieces of plastic that come between the needles and that helped mark them for me. So I thread up my first yarn. I said turquoise first. Oh, One of those, one of the biggest challenges in knitting today, finding the yarn end. You can tell I didn't wind that one up. Lay that into the eye of your carriage. Knit across and I'm going to stop right at zero between two stitches. I think this is zero. There it is. I've stopped the eye of the carriage right between two needles. Then, if you are sitting like normal people in front of the bond, you take this down right between those two needles, remove it from the eye of the carriage, and put it in your lap. In this case, I'm just going to let it hang around. This will be interesting. Let's see if I can keep myself from getting too tangled. And I start my second yarn. Go right down between those two needles and continue knitting. Presto changeo. Again, because I don't want to work this yarn in later, I'm going to cross it under the first yarn. I'm going to weave it over and under for five or six stitches. I'm going to tuck that back there. I'm going to hang a clip on it, push it back into half knit position, knit back to the same place. I think for simplicity's sake, we're just going to change our color in the same place today. I knit back, stop my eye of the carriage exactly between those two needles, stop, take the first color out, and this is the important thing I want you to see. As you're crossing these colors to bring them up, see which end I have. If you can see under here, these two yarns must cross at this point. If they don't, you're going to leave a hole there. So what we need to do is make sure those are crossed and continue across. As I said, this is very serviceable if you have two or three color changes that you're doing in a row. If you're working, as I said, normally sitting in front of the bond, it's very nice. Those, the three color changes follow in an order in each direction. You cross those yarns over so it turns out to be very rhythmic and rather soothing to do. 
I'd like you now to do five rows or ten rows, practice a little, of a simple color change that is just coming straight up. You can work around zero, use two colors, leave your yarns in the fabric guide, and when you come back, I will show you how to do multiple color changes with the Rube Goldberg, in the improved Rube Goldberg spare parts intarsia technique. This sweater is another K faucet design and it's called Little Teeth or it's something like that, Tooth Edge, and it is done with multiple color changes. Most of these yarns are no more than two or these ones maybe four yards long. And in order to accomplish that, I used the Rube Goldberg technique, which I will show you. It is partly set up already on my table. I have one of these little corner brackets, which is very inexpensive at your hardware store. I think I paid $1.29 for two of them. And I have clamped it with a C-clamp to my table. It overhangs about by three quarters of an inch, but this measurement is not critical. What's critical is that you get your bond working properly. So you need two of these little bars, two regular old C-clamps, and then a stick. But we'll discuss the stick later. I'm going to attach this little iron. By the way, since I wrote this article, it's appeared in Key Plate News number 12 and it will probably appear in Best of 87 or Tips and Techniques from 87. I've had lots of innovative carpenters come up with better techniques. None has delivered one to me yet, but they keep promising. So I'm still using my old C-clamps and my brackets and I wanted to show you these because you don't have to buy anything special except finding the stick is the trick. Mine happens to be the bottom of an old window shade which means I think it's made out of plywood. It is. I think we study this. Yeah, it's plywood and it's very stiff. If you just go to the hardware store and buy screen molding it'll work adequately but you need something rigid so maybe a piece of metal. It needs to be 50 to 60 inches long, and depending on whether or not you have an extension kit on, it is one quarter inch in this direction and three quarters inches high. It is going to take the place of your fabric guide. Uh, let's see, my stick has a warp. Being from an old window shade, I need to put my warp in in a particular direction. I'm going to have it come in this way so it's up against my knitting. So the first thing I'm going to do, I need to come around a little bit I'm going to remove my fabric guide because it's taking the place of that. And I'm going to slide my stick in to that end. This table is a little bit longer than my standard bond table. So it's, I'll have to slide it in like this. There we go. Usually that NC clamp is free so that I can just slide this stick in and out. And I suggest that if you're going to do that, you, you know what, if you, I wouldn't ever drill a hole in this beautiful table, but these little brackets have holes in them. You could just drill right into the table and leave them permanently attached if you wanted to. That would be convenient. Okay, now this stick should be just, a, just under those needles in about the first row, and it ought to be firm up against those needles. And how do you tell if you have it in the right position? do a few rows of waste yarn. Let me grab one here. Let's try this one. And make sure it's knitting properly before you get into your color changes. You'll be able to tell. Knit slowly. If it makes loops, it means that your stick is not tight enough up against your knitting. If it makes a loop, it means that it's loose, this is pushed forward, the stitch has not gone behind the latch. If your knitting bunches up, and stays on top and doesn't want to drop freely, then it means that the stick is too tight. So just play with this measurement back and forth and make sure it's knitting normally before you try your color changes. I'm going to snip this. It is a little bit cumbersome. I had one student who had a piece of plexiglass cut to this size. Because it was so flexible, it did not work very well. I'm going to pull these under for now these little ends to get them out of my way because I don't want to confuse them. This was just my test yarn here so that you could see and that I could see that it was working. Also, obviously you can't hang your claw weights up like that so I reach around and hang them from what would be the right side of the fabric. Bring this around like this 
and this time we exact the color change the same way, it's just that we don't have a fabric guide in the way. I am going to knit until I get to the point, I think I'll put some yarn in there, otherwise it's going to drop on the floor and I will be most unhappy. Stick that right down through the eye of the carriage, knit to the point where you want to change your colors, stop between two needles, bring that out, introduce a second color. I'm working with short lengths here just because I can't be at the front of the frame to pick up those balls. Whoops. A little bit of enthusiastic knitting there. I went a little too far. Oh good, and I didn't really stop between two needles. I went a little bit beyond that and people always ask me, what do you do? Well, I just pull it back down through those two needles. Stick one more in. Knit across for just a few stitches. This is going to be a little bit of an asymmetrical design. Pull that one out. Do the fourth one. Again, if you are going to do multiple, multiple color changes, you don't want to cope with these ends. This is a little bit short, but will it'll function. We bring the bitter end under the next color and weave it back on itself. You can see the advantage of weaving it on, yourself, on itself because then it won't show through on your main yarn. Just hang a little clip there. I know it seems like it slows up your knitting, and of course it does. But first of all, hand knitting with bobbins is very slow. And second of all, it's not nearly as slow as weaving in all those ends with a needle and thread when you're done with this. Of course, I actually know some people who like to do that. So if you like to do that, let these pieces fly. Work them in later. You've noticed in every case, I hope I'm paying attention enough that I have crossed those over because so, I don't want to hole. Well, we don't have another, oh, we don't have any others. Uh, yes, I could weave in this end one. I could do it right along here, but I'm not going to for right now. I'm going to knit back. Notice I've put these back into half knit position. They're a little bit sloppy, but the bond is very forgiving. I'm going to stop exactly between t those two needles. And once the ends are woven in, things begin to move a little more quickly. Stop at my color change. Now, can you see the advantage? of all these yarn ends. Whoops, brought it out a little bit too early, but you can fish it around as long as it comes over that needle. Pick up that one, cross it. In all cases, I'm crossing. And do you see how the crosses follow in a nice pattern? Finish up that row. Remove these clips. You can tuck those down in if you want. I usually take my latch hook tool and pull them down but I won't now because I'm just going to do one more row. The beauty is these yarn ends just patiently stay where you're going to meet them. They lie down and they wait until you get there to use them. In your fabric guide you would now have four yarns and you would have to separate them at each color change and try to figure out which one is supposed to cross which. If you have the parts for Rube Goldberg, I encourage you to try it now. If not, you can consult Key Plate News number 12 or you can consult this tape and I do encourage you to come up with something to replace that fabric guide for when you want to do multiple color changes. If you come back in a moment, I'm going to show you what I think is the most exciting use of color in knitting.